Hey guys, <clears throat> it's uh, about 2 a.m. over here and uh, East Coast time, but I was uh, compelled to make a video, so here we are. I want to make a video today about uh, grips, feeding, stuff like that, and the question was asked to me recently, what grip should I use to feed balls? I'm teaching tennis or if I'm trying to teach tennis maybe you're a parent that you want to give your son or daughter a few extra balls to hit get them uh, get them some uh, extra practice now that the weather is getting warmer the answer to that is I would recommend a continental grip continental grip is very good grip for control purposes it's one of the reasons why we use it for overhead serving volleys uh, we use it for low balls it's a grip that gives you a lot of flexibility in a lot of situations and it offers you a great deal of control so continental grip is more than likely what you wanna use to feed balls is what I use to feed balls is what most of my peers use to feed balls once in a while you may switch to a different grip depending on the situation if your student wants to practice different things for the most part you're going to be using continental grip though. Another thing to note about feeding balls is that unless you're practicing a specific situation like practicing uh, practicing to return a sliced ball or practicing to return a ball with a lot of top spin, for the most part if you're feeding dead ball drills, uh, even live ball drills if you're starting the live cooperative drill what you want to do is you want to feed as dead a ball as you can something with as little spin as possible and you know you just if you're doing a dead ball drill you're just doing a dead ball drill is something where it's not as interactive they're hitting the ball and it's not coming back to them in a dead ball drill situation uh... like for example a three across if you're hitting three four hands across the baseline one two three and then the next person goes something like that they're working more on mechanics and so you don't wanna you, you wanna give them as easy a ball to hit as possible because they're just warming up if you're doing a live ball drill again you really you, you don't wanna add any additional variables to the start of the live ball drill you really wanna get the rally going as fast as possible and so you'll feed a nice easy dead ball with as little spin as possible and of course the continental grip is gonna go a long way to help that okay the other thing is if uh, you're starting a feed or a dead ball drill uh, you want to feed the ball in such a way that the ball is not going to be too high or too low you're going to have to mix it up with people depending on their height most of the time when we're playing tennis when we're hitting balls you want to hit that ball at about waist level that's our power center anything that gets away from our waist uh, you're going to start losing power the exception of course is on an overhead or a serve uh, that has a different mechanic to it and of course you know that's uh, the exception to the rule but for the most part you want to hit most of the balls by the waist and so you're thinking that you want to feed the ball uh, close to them if uh, what I found is that if you take the distance between you and the student and you feed the ball perfectly in the middle between you and the student it ends up landing somewhere close to their ankles uh, you can make the argument that the student should move toward the ball but the truth is you know you want to give them a nice easy ball to work on their mechanics to get things moving so you want to feed a little bit further than halfway uh, of the distance between you and the student and you want to feed it a in a way that the ball is going to come up to their waist and give them a nice ball to start things off of course like I said the ex there's exceptions to every rule and depending on the situation that might not be the case you might give them a ball that's a little bit tougher on the run or if you're practicing a situation where for example you might be practicing with your student to get them comfortable with taking a ball on the rise or comfortable in a situation where the ball is very high and very deep and what the student will have to do is to move early to move their feet back early and diagonally so that they can take the ball coming down but of course they're not going to take it at the baseline because it's going to be around their shoulders they're going to move back let it fall settle down to their waist and then they take the ball so in a situation like that it's uh, one of the exceptions to the rule where you want to not feed the ball by the waist but 
after the ball bounces and it comes up and it comes back down you want the ball somewhere around the waist for the most part okay another thing is you want to be feeding the ball to the right side of your body if you're right-handed if you're left-handed you're gonna be feeding to the left side of your body what I've noticed is that a lot of people who start uh, feeding balls to their kids or if you're a new instructor or new to coaching a lot of the times when you feed balls you're feeding balls in front of your body that doesn't really work out that well because your body gets in the way similar to uh, our mechanics in tennis when we hit the ball we hit in front of our body and of course to one of the sides so you're hitting in front into the right or in front into the left so depending on which one is your dominant hand I'm righty so I feed on the right side of my body I'm feeding on the right side of my body not in front of my body okay the other thing is if you turn slightly I'm not talking about 90 degrees to the right if you're right-handed or 90 degrees to the left if you're left-handed but if you turn slightly I would say 45 degrees it's gonna go a long way to uh, improving your accuracy with your feed and just making it a little bit easier you'll find that the mechanics similar to in tennis you have more room to swing so it's a little bit easier use gravity when you're feeding balls okay so you don't want to take your racket too far up or too far back but for the most part if you just allow your arm to come down gravity will do most of the work for you the rack will do most of the work for you and the strings will do most of the work for you if you find that you're muscling the ball a great deal or your wrist or your elbow hurts a lot after feeding a basket of balls then you're gonna have to re-examine how you're feeding balls chances are you could be doing something a little bit better okay uh, let me think to see if there's anything else I really want to bring up or anything else I want to mention for a second bear with me um, no I guess that's it so I guess to summarize when you're feeding balls for the most part you're gonna want a continental grip for the most part you're gonna want to be feeding to the right side of your body or to the left side of your body depending on which one is your dominant hand um, use gravity don't muscle the ball too much if you're having tennis elbow or your wrist hurts chances are you could be doing something better re-examine that when you're feeding balls try to feed a little bit past halfway between you and the intended student also try to feed the ball in such a way that there's not a lot of spin on it and so that it'll bounce up into their strike zone which is around the waist that's going to vary depending on the student younger students obviously the <laughs> their waist will be a little bit lower older students obviously their waist is going to be a little bit higher so take that into account of course again there's exceptions to the rule but for the most part these are your rules of thumb when feeding okay as always if you have any questions or comments feel free to contact me and uh, thank you very much for watching the video all right so play safe and keep it tight